Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sam Dever Podcast, episode 43. In this episode, I speak with actor and acting teacher Daryl Morris. Daryl is actually a huge reason on how I ended up in Los Angeles as he was my acting teacher in Las Vegas. Phenomenal guy, taught me a ton about acting and really got me ready and told me about the place I ended up going out here in Los Angeles, which was Playhouse West. Uh, Very passionate, funny, intelligent guy, and it was awesome to have a great conversation with him here in Las Vegas. And he actually wins the award for uh, best background so far. He did it from the pool. (laughs) So I thought that was really cool. So huge thanks to Daryl for doing this. And the book of the episode, I just finished this one not too long ago. It's called Master Your Emotions. And I'm going to butcher the name by Thabat Maurice. Uh, really good book. Really, I, at first I didn't know quite what to think of it, but he does a really good job just breaking down the basic human emotions and uh, really giving you a step-by-step process to work through them and uh, get to the core of yourself. So I, I really recommend this. And there's actually a workbook in the back of it as well. It's uh, Master Your Emotions by, again, butchering the name here, Taibat Maurice. With that being said, Here's my conversation with Daryl. Daryl Morris, also known as the Colonel. Welcome to the Sam Dever podcast. Hi, Sam. How are you? I got some message here. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm doing great. And I just got to oh, say. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on. I, <laughs> okay, I got it. I just got to say, I think you've just won the award for the coolest background ever on this podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> you told me, go, hey, can I do this from the pool? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? It's Vegas, baby, Vegas. <laughs> How's that Vegas summer heat treating you? It's, I mean, so far, not too bad. We haven't had any 120s yet, so that's good, you know. But I'm always looking for uh, at least a week or a... Uh, week here or week there kind of escape you know like um i don't know california or maybe utah or you know just to to take 103 down to 83 you know yeah. I, so I, and i swear vegas is it still building like crazy out there I yeah mean, and the funny thing is sam lake mead is drying up it's drying up they, i don't know if you've seen any of the pictures <laughs> well first yeah. of all they found two bodies in barrels <laughs> oh, did you know that I think someone had posed. Yeah, yeah, so they really did. Yeah, huh? yeah. They found two bodies in barrels. So I'm, I'm sure they're going to find more too. But anyway, they had a picture last week of a boat sticking up. It was about this much water and the rest was just the boat exposed. Now they took another picture a week later. The boat is completely exposed now. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing how quick it's drying up. So what's the plan? Is there like a backup plan or? <laughs> well, That's a great question. I talked to somebody, and I don't know if this is true or not, but they said there's like 13 other dams that feed us. Because I got to be honest with you, if that's the case, I mean, I I guess that's okay. The problem is they keep building here, homes and hotels and everything else. Hold on, there might be a bee. (laughs) I don't like bees. (laughs) Anyway, homes and hotels, and I'm like, where are you going to get the water? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a big concern here. Yeah. Every, um, every time I pull into town, I swear there's a new apartment complex. There's a new something. I'm just like, I, I don't know where everyone, I guess they're all coming from California. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so what, what, what's, um, what's your average gas price there? Like six and a quarter. Yeah. Just about uh, $6, about $6 30 cents on average. Cost me $94 to fill up the other day. My brother just said that Vegas hit $6 though. No, no. Well, there's a few idiot stations here <laughs> on their, on their like high octane, they're over six dollars. Yeah, but you can get it now for five oh nine at Sam's Club. Five oh nine. Yeah, yeah. That's cheaper than Costco. Well, no, Costco's the same. They always match each other. Oh, they always match. I didn't know. Wow. Yeah, five oh nine. But hey, Sam, five oh nine is still no bargain. <laughs> you know, you know what I do? I fill. I now fill up at a half tank. Huh. I, I just fill up at a half tank. So it doesn't, so it doesn't hurt so bad, (laughs) you know? And the funny thing is, whatever whatever it used to cost me to fill up for a full tank almost cost me for a half tank. 
How scary is that? Isn't that great? And I don't see yeah. any sign of it really slowing down. Well, I, I'm seeing bits and pieces and bits cracks and pieces. here. Yeah. So I don't know if you heard today, but the um, the Senate just passed the uh, gun bill. I, no, I didn't catch that. So what happened? Well, now it goes to the House. Now it goes to the House. So the gun bill is the red the red flag laws, which means anybody that's not that doesn't belong owning a gun mentally cannot have one. Hmm. Uh, you have to be 21 or older to buy one, and I think there's some level of background checks. Which I mean, to be honest with you, you know the Clinton administration had banned assault rifles, mm -hmm. and the Bush administration had let the ban expire. Mm. And it's so funny if you watch from the time it expired till now, versus the time that Clinton had banned it till the time before it expired. It's apples and oranges as far as mass shootings. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize the Clinton administration had done that. Yep, they banned it. With, uh, with, listen to this with a bipartisan Congress, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so basically yeah. now this is going, you said this is going to the Senate now? Right, the, no, the Senate passed it, now it's going to the House. The House. Yeah, so I hope it passes. You know, I really it hope it sounds like passes. a positive thing. Yeah, I mean, anything to, you know, I mean, if it curbs, if we don't have another mass shooting this year, that would be a very good thing, or a mass shooting ever. I mean, you know, Australia, 1996, was their last mass shooting. And the government was very smart. They did a buyback program. They bought all the guns back. And they haven't had a mass shooting since in 26 years. Wow. And then New Zealand had one about a year and a half, two years ago, under the female prime minister. She banned them. And they haven't had one since. You know what? I was telling someone it's pretty sad when now when we hear about a mass shooting or uh, see one, it's 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 not even. It's almost just like second nature now. I, I, well, it's 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 like oh it's another like getting, one, right? It's like getting used to the gas prices. Yeah, you know, it's like what can you do about it? And then, but this Uvalde, uh, Uvalde in Buffalo, where I think were the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you already had the. 24 kids and two teachers in um whatchamacallit um what was it 10 12 years ago where was that again it that was right? in, uh, columbine no 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 the, the little kids and the two teachers oh sandy hook yes sir and then this basically was like a duplicate yeah you know I mean, less yeah. less kids were killed but and how about the police officers standing in the hallway for 77 minutes when the doors were unlocked the doors to the classroom when the kid was shooting shooting the kids were unlocked and they stood there. Yeah, that's that's the part I'm. I think a lot of people are just really unclear on what what was going on with that. I, There's nothing. I, to, it's it's clear as a bell. They were scared to death, and they didn't do anything. And I can promise you, there's going to be about two thousand lawsuits. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're talking about four and five year old kids, Sam. It was so bad that they, <laughs> there was so much damage to the children, they had to use the parents' DNA to match them. Oh. Yeah. That's how much damage there was to the bodies. They had to use the parents' DNA to match the kid to the parent. And then the one little girl was really smart. She took a bunch of the blood and wiped it all over her body and played possum. So the guy would think she was dead. I just, it just doesn't even, uh, you, like, I don't know, like, when you, he, you hear these things, it's just like, it, th th there is no sense in the world. Like, there well, is no, no, there is no sense. And the thing is, you know, this kid, he was on the websites researching the guns. Do you know that on his birthday, his 18th birthday, he bought not one, he bought two assault rifles. Then he bought 300 rounds of ammunition. I mean, doesn't that set off some kind of a bell? Right. You know? Yeah. That doesn't settle. It's like the guy here in Vegas, October 1st, 2017. Yeah. He, they bring in eight or nine carts of luggage. I mean, nobody questions anything. Yeah. Eight or nine carts of luggage. This guy had the same rifles with the bump stock. So it turned a semi-automatic into an automatic. Killed 58 people, injured over 200 more. You know, yeah. 
I remember we had an acting class. I think we had class. Oh, yeah. Yes, what we day? did. We had, yes, we did. What day did yes, that happen? We, did that happen on a what day? Did October first. It was a Sunday. Class was on Tuesday. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. We had class on the third. That's right. Yeah. So, wow. on a happier note, what's yeah, happening? Right. With, what's happening with acting? Right now, for me, uh, pretty not not much. Nothing. I had finished up my two years at Playhouse West, and then the pandemic happened. Uh, it was on pause, and then I had my big injury. Um, aside from that, I really haven't. I want to get back to it. I miss it. I really miss it. Um, well, Sam, I can only tell you, you were one of my best. Wow. You were one of my best, and I don't say that lightly. I had uh, you and um, Gar Yee, of course, was great. Yeah. Um, and um, I got to remember her name now, the redhead. Uh, <laughs> you know Josie. Who I'm Josie. Josie, oh yeah, she was. Yeah. She she was my very best. She really was. Yeah. And then she she moved on, and you know it's like I've, I'm finding one thing out as I get older, life never stays the same for very long. Okay. I had classes from 2017 to 2020 there, and then I taught classes at the International Academy of Film and Television from 14 to 16. So I had a year off before I started at the Indie Film Factory. I do follow Playhouse West LA and I follow Tony Savant at Playhouse West Philadelphia. And you know, Sam, my, my, my teaching and my philosophy about acting hasn't changed. It's all about the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so funny. It's, it's so simple, but it's so, pe people, um, they have a very tough time peeling away the onion to show us the truth. Honestly, and I, when they do, you get your best work, as I've taught you. Well, uh, to fill the people in, I well, first of all, I have to give you so much credit for not only opening my world to acting, but really one of the main reasons I moved to LA was for Playhouse West, which I never would have heard about if it wasn't for you. In my first acting class with you, you just we kept talking about Playhouse West, Playhouse West. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> and then you know so could you talk could you take us maybe a little about your uh acting or actually can we let's take it back a little bit further you grew up in las vegas didn't you right so let me let me give you a little background yeah so when i was a kid and it's a kind of a very funny story um i was about 11 years old now i played football out in the street with my friends and i played basketball in the driveway with my friends but there was i my inspiration believe it or not was the Sonny and Cher show. Huh. I used to lay on my mom's bed on Sunday night and I watched Sonny and Cher. And I said, mom, I want to do that. I got to do that. So there was an acting school here in town. Uh, John and the last name's Gregory. I don't remember the wife's name, but John Gregory. Anyway, it was acting, singing and dancing. Okay. So we'd put on shows but it was more musical than it was anything else. But it really got me like started. And <laughs> now mind you, when I was 11, you know, my friends are all into sports and of course I was too, but I had to get my own tap and ballet shoes because we were doing tap and ballet. So I did that and of course I got all kinds of crap from my family, <laughs> my friends, you know. So I only did that for probably about a year and then from there, I, the next uh, foray into acting was high school. And there was a, a play called a man in a, the man in a dog suit. Hmm. It was a play in my high school. I got the lead role, but then I couldn't turn it down. I got a job. And back then the job is one of the jobs in Vegas, uh, you know, it had nice tips and you couldn't, so I didn't, I, I had to turn down the role or I, I, because this is how, you know, when you're a young kid, you don't know any better. Yeah. And this is one advice I give to my actors. If you accept a role, unless Spielberg is calling, you take, you, you know, you, you go along with your responsibility and keep the role you've accepted. But anyway, I didn't. And I took this job. And so my next foray into acting was UNLV. I took theater classes there. And I enjoyed them a lot. And so... I didn't do anything at all from like probably 
79 until 2000 and God, let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> Hang on. I got to make sure I get this right. Let me think for a minute. I got to get, I really want to get this right. Um, two, I want to say 2008. Or no, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. 1998. I'm reading an article in the Las Vegas Review Journal about a guy named Gerald Gordon. And he's teaching these acting classes in Las Vegas for $650 a month. Now, this is back in 98. Wow. <laughs> and I said, I'm not doing that. But I started looking around and I found this guy named Joseph who was in uh, the trial at Nuremberg. He was an acting teacher. He was in the movie, The Trial at Nuremberg. Anyhow, there's a junior high school here called Orr Junior High. So in 1998, we meet in the a side room of the gym. And, you know, it's not really acting classes. He gives you a script and, okay, now do it. You know, and you're, you're reading with other students. And then as I'm, you know, I'm doing this, I'm going to these classes, I hear about these auditions at a place called and the Off Broadway Theater, which is here in which was here in town, at the uh, Commercial Center. Now it's a really really funny story. The theater owners were a couple named Carl and Margie Buto, and they had this little theater. And the funny thing is, in the theater, in the little seats, there was a pole right in the middle of the seating <laughs> uh. so whenever they put on a play people would get there early so they didn't have to sit behind the pole huh. you know it was like a it was like a, a load-bearing pole in the in the building so anyway i got a lot of experience with carl and margie and there were a lot of auditions came through the off-broadway theater and as a matter of fact um i did an audition on camera audition for Sonic Burger. Huh. Okay. Now this is a great story. Not only do I get it, but I got all three of my Taft Hartley waivers because it was a it was a um, it was a union commercial, and you know Taft Hartley chooses you because they can't find anybody else to fit it. Now I was only an extra, and I think we were there for two days or three days. I made like three thousand dollars. Jeez. Union wages for this uh, commercial. So this is 1998. I'm, I have an Allstate agency. I'm not married. And 99 comes along and Allstate changes all the rules about the way you're going to run your agency and what you're going to do. And I said, you know what? I'm very, very much back into acting now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell my Allstate business. I'm going to Hollywood. Now, Carl Buto. We are at a rap party after one of the plays we did. He says, if you're going to do that and you're going to study there, study at one place only, Playhouse West. My hand of God, Playhouse West. Hmm. So August 12th, 2000, I pack up uh, like the Clampets and I move uh, <laughs> to Beverly Hills. No, I moved to Hollywood. And where I moved to, was a, I had, it was unbelievable. I had a dear, dear friend who's a producer, still is. He produces for Amazon now. And it was an old, uh, a much older apartment building on um, Beachwood, mm -hmm. okay? Which, this, I don't, if you know, Beachwood goes all the way to the sign. Yeah. Okay? So I got this one-bedroom apartment. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing is, I, don't, I know you know or don't know, but I'm Jewish. The building was owned by a Jewish lady and managed by a Jewish lady. So Dan, who's Jewish, got me in. So now you're going to love this. The one-bedroom apartment in 2000, take a guess how much it was. Well, what, six, seven hundred dollars. Seven fifty. Wow. <laughs> the seven fifty, and I am right in the middle of Bohemia. I mean, it's all artists and writers and actors. And as a matter of fact, one of my neighbors was Gunther from Friends. No kidding. No kidding. He used to walk his dog. Uh, God rest his soul. He passed away last year. Oh. Anyway, so I, and I, um, I, so now here's a, a little side note. 
I auditioned for a UPS commercial July of 2000 in Vegas at the Venetian against about 100 other actors. And I had a dear friend of mine who was an actor who said, listen, I want you to go into that audition with one idea in mind. You just don't care. I say, yeah, you know, because I mean, what are the chances I'm going to get this? So I go in, whatever. Okay, bye, thanks, get out. You know, whatever. You don't give it, I mean, and I've, taught, I've always taught you, don't just go. Don't like keep thinking about it because you're going to drive yourself crazy. So I didn't. So then the next day I leave for LA to go look for an apartment because I'm moving. I get a call oh. on my Nokia cell phone, the, the, the kind with the little buttons. I mean, you don't really, I don't really, but the really, really old cell phone. Hey, you booked the UPS commercial. Now, how ironic is it that I'm in the middle of Hollywood and I book a national commercial? Jeez. Okay. So I got to run back to Vegas. We film the commercial. I pack everything up. August 12th, I moved to Hollywood. So I get to Hollywood. I move into the, the, my, I moved on a Saturday, Monday, all my stuff comes in a truck. They move it up to the apartment, you know, um, and then the first thing I did, I went right down to Playhouse West and I met Robert Carnegie and he says, yeah, you're going to have to audition. And I said, that's fine. So I, you know, I don't remember what I read, but we read a piece together and he goes, okay. And I just remember I was, one thing that Carl Buto told me was Playhouse West is for very, very committed and very serious actors only. If you don't want to do the work, if you don't want to show up, they don't care. Uh, you, 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 they, you need them more than they need you. And they, he was right. He was right. So I got my backpack. I got my notepad. I got my pen. And I was rock and roll. And for two years, I was, um, took me about six months to go from beginning to intermediate yep. and about another eight months to go to advanced. And I, I was, I used to go on Thursday nights and watch the advanced class before, when I was intermediate, Scott Kahn and James Franco. Wow. They used to have, I used to do their scene nights there and I used to take notes and I, I had Mark Pellegrino as a teacher. I had, um, Sean Barnes as a teacher. I had Tony Savant as a teacher. Cause at one point I moved from studio one to studio two. Mm -hmm. And I used to love Studio Two because they had that great Mexican restaurant across the street. Oh, so yeah, I'd eat, yeah. be I'd eat before class. <laughs> uh, but Studio One had the ninety-nine cent store, so I'd get my Fiji water there. You know, and there was a Mer I don't know if it's changed, but there was a Mercedes dealership right next to it. Uh, there's a BMW dealership. I live right down the road from there. I live right. By right, there. right. So BMW. Well, yeah. Well, maybe it was. I, you know, it was a foreign car. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I, I'd go to class and I was, I mean, I was dedicated. And the reason I instituted in my classes Marine Corps was because I taught you guys to overcome, adapt, and improvise. You know, when you, and it's get out of your heads. It has nothing to do with what you think. It's everything about what you feel. And my biggest thing, and I, as I watch films now, and this is the, the, one of the greatest things that I was ever taught. Take your time. Mm. The pinch in the ouch, Sam. The pinch in the ouch. The pinch yeah. in the ouch. Let the pinch land. Let it land. Let it resonate. There's no hurry. And great directors will let you do your work. Great directors will. They will let you do your work. And I love working with great directors. And I, I've worked with some of the best and I've worked with some of the worst, you know, I love a director that, that trusts you when a director trusts his actor, there's nothing better in the world. Mm -hmm. And you've got other actors that you're working with. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you've got Meisner actors working with method actors, you know, and Ra um, I feel, and I, you know, nothing against method acting. It's not my cup of tea. I am a Meisner disciple because I believe all about the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you boil all his work down, it all boils down to one thing and it's the truth. That's it. You know, and the re the beauty of taking your time is 
when you do, your real truth manifests itself, I believe. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I was there and I loved class and I was doing, I got some great work when I was there. I did some films. I did a play. Um, but the thing was for me, I was only at the time about 40, 41 years old. Um, and I had sold my business. So I was living off that money. Now, the problem with in LA was I went to see a CPA and he says, well, if you stay here and you get a job, because I was thinking about that, you're going to not have to only declare your income here, but any income from the sale of your business. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do that. Ah. Plus, I wasn't overly comfortable in LA. I mean, let's be honest. It's not the warmest place on earth. <laughs> it's just not. I mean, the, the people, I mean, it's, it's all about climbing and all about who you are and what you have right. and, you know, and who you know. And um, I, so I, I decided to move back. Now, the funny thing is that ever since I've moved back, I have done probably 25 projects for Sony and Warner Brothers on voiceover. I've done about seven or eight Adam Sandler films or David Spade, Kevin James. I was in Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. I had the opening scene with um, Kevin James. And a friend of mine made a very good point, my producer friend who used to live above me. You don't have to live in LA to act. Yeah. And he's right. I mean, I, uh, I just this year, I did a... Um, a commercial for a, um, a web commercial still in all it's acting i'm happy about it um i did a um i just did a short film about six weeks ago so you know i like the opportunity to act you know obviously i'm not going to get rich from it here and i'm thinking about starting acting classes again but at the moment um i take opportunities as they come so that's kind of where I am and where I was. And yeah, yeah, you know. By the way, I was very, very, very unhappy when you left. Oh, yeah, no, I. <laughs> very unhappy. I, I will say you were without question the most dedicated, the most dedicated. What? You never missed a class. You were always ready to work. You were always prepared. And it, it was a pure joy teaching you. Well, thank you for saying that. And really, uh, you're the one that prepared me for Playhouse West because it was exactly what you said it was. It was no bullshit. Uh, like you said, like if you're not there to work 110% and fully participate, you're gone. <laughs> like, so let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Yeah, I'm trying what, to was there Was there anything that I taught you that was taught any differently there? Um. Because remember now, I didn't get you, you know, I couldn't take you to advanced. You know, we, we, you were with me, I think, about a year. You know, I think just about a year, weren't you? I was with you for five months, actually. Oh, was that it? Five months? But it, that five months seemed like two years. <laughs> okay, but when you got there, what, was what I was teaching you congruent at Playhouse when you first started? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for the most part, I guess the difference would be they how much more in depth they go with everything. Um, okay, the different, the different levels of everything, you know, be you know beyond doors and activities, like the different, um, not to give away all their stuff, but like, uh, you know, door and activity, and then you do emotional door and preparation setup, door and activity into the scene, like you know, like just different levels of that. So right, but so my class was a good launching pad then. Your your class was a perfect launching pad because I'll never forget being outside class, uh, the very first night I was going to audit, and people outside are doing repetition with each other, and I'm like, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> right. And I'm like, it's it's uh, I can't, I can't thank you enough for basically sending me there because. That place changed my life. It changed my life. Like wow. I, I went there on night three of living in LA. And for the next two years, 
And you had told me this. You just said you're going to meet a lot of people. I met so many people so fast. Like sure. it, it was like my time in Vegas, but in a way shorter amount of time in LA because that playhouse, I mean, you're doing film projects with people. There's plays and scene nights and right. get togethers and you're rehearsing all the time. So right. you, you right. really get that bond with people. Right. And, but, but mm -hmm. Sam, let me say something. Yeah. The biggest problem with the way I teach here in Vegas, and I think you would agree with this, I want the most dedicated and committed. And yeah. the problem here in Vegas, everybody wants like to be on camera, on the lights, yeah. and I'm an actor, and, and it, that's, you know. And the beauty about LA and New York is because there's so much opportunity there, and that's really where things happen. Again, that's why Playhouse says you're either in or you're out. Yeah, because this is a very serious uh, um, uh, training ground for very serious actors, and a lot of actors have gone on to do a Tessa. What's her name? Tessa She's Thompson. big time. Yeah, Tessa Thompson. She's big time now. Yeah, you know Franco uh, Khan. I mean, and uh, there's probably fifteen or twenty five others that I don't. Pellegrino is. I guess he's still working. You know. So the point is, it's like. If my job was to get you ready for LA, then mission accomplished. You know, mission accomplished. But um, I'm very glad to hear you say what you said about, you know, hey, repetition and, and you know, yeah. uh, my, my, it's like, okay, you, again, I mean, I hate, I guess the best way to describe it is I'm boot camp and I get you ready for the Marines. So what, going back to that, the reason I use the Marines so much is because they were so, it, they're, they're a crack squad. Yeah. Everything is ironed and pressed, and, and there's no bullshit. Yeah. There's no like, well, I don't feel like it, Sergeant. I don't feel like it, Colonel. Oh, really? You don't feel like it? <laughs> you know? And the, the, the great actors and the people who do the great work are the people that do the work when they don't feel like doing the work. Yep. Yep. That's the difference. The ones who do the work when they don't feel like doing it, but they do it anyway. Okay, the, the, the desire burns in them and, and they want to be the best of the best, you know. I am forever grateful for you. I've told people out in L.A. about you. Um, I think I'm so grateful to you and the Indie Film Factory for creating that environment um, and giving people those opportunities in Las Vegas. So I really, I really thank you for that. And I really... Uh, it's really great. I'll never forget that scene night we did before I left, like the amount of right. effort you put into that and getting right. it all set up for us. We had a packed house. It was full. That was one of the coolest moments uh, ever. And that really gave me the confidence to go to Los Angeles. So I thank you. And I, uh, we got about two minutes here. I always give the guests the last word. Is there anything you want to leave us with? Anything you want yeah, to say? Yeah, Sam. Um, basically, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. I wish I had a, a, a class full of Sam's. Honestly, um, what? Uh, so is Gar Yee still uh, there? I think so. Yeah. And by the way, Gar and I, that <laughs> I'm running out of time, but shout out to Gar. I was scene partners with her for three scenes in Mr. Carnegie's class. Wow. She took me to an entirely different level. Like it oh, was yeah. incredible working right. with her. She, and I told her, yeah. I told her, and did, what about Alexis? Did she ever stay? Uh, she was there. She's not there now, I know. But uh, yeah, she was there. Her and I, we did a film together and won in a film competition. So that was really cool. That was really right. cool. We had been at your class in Vegas and then we combined at Playhouse and won a film competition. So that was pretty That's cool. great. Well, Sam, listen, I'll let you go. I know you don't have a lot of time. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk. Hopefully there was some insight here. Yes. And uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to do this again. Yeah, no, we'll have to do another one. And I, I, you picking the pool was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hey, listen. If people want to find you on social media, can people find you on social media? Yeah, Actors Dynamic. Um, I'm on Facebook, on Actors Dynamic. Okay, sounds Actors good. Dynamic. Hey, stay cool out there in Las Vegas, and I'll be talking to you soon. Very good, sir. You take care, right. and thanks for the time. Take care, my friend. Bye. Bye-bye right. now.